I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 14th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And the sun is so bright, I have no idea where the camera is. I'm hoping I'm facing in the right direction. This is crazy bright. We're going to be doing more on business and why uh, using Nicaragua is not a great way to learn how to be a serial entrepreneur and understanding more in depth as to how the economics of business is going to work here. We're going to get to that right after the bump. In yesterday's video, we talked a bit about investing in Nicaragua in business, and completely by coincidence, there were a number of comments on an, a much older video on the four reasons that uh, businesses fail in Nicaragua, um, and, and covered a lot of the things that I was covering in the video yesterday. So I wanted to expand on that today because there, it's worth digging in a little bit deeper. First, one of the questions was, has any American tried to corner the tobacco market? So let's be clear, if there's a thing you're thinking, wow, Nicaragua's got this thing, no one's done it, I'm gonna go, things like tobacco and coffee that are uh, so well known here in Nicaragua, what are the big products here, you know, tobacco and coffee and chocolate, oh, maybe there's a big opportunity, right, to like bring that in, so, trust me, those are all one, heavily regulated giant industries just like gold mining, right? Nicaragua is a gold mine for business. Literally, it's one of the leading nations in gold mining. So while this is a small, poor economy, these big industries that do really well and generate all the revenue of the country, they have extremely old, very numerous, very established giant businesses that already control the world market, all the import, export, everything of those those products is already very handled. If you wanna get into gold mining, you're gonna to need to invest just like you would in the US. Tons of money, all kinds of previous existing expertise. Same thing with coffee, same thing with chocolate. Is it possible to get into some of these markets? Yes, it's technically possible to get in. Um, I do know of someone who I'll try and do my best to link his channel, He's starting a new YouTube channel, new, like a year old, um, and he came down and he is successfully running a new coffee business here. But it's important to note, he's actually a Nicaraguan, he already owned the farm, it was established generations ago, he has a bunch of coffee expertise, he grew up in the United States and already has connections on both sides. So the combination of already owning a coffee farm that his family had abandoned, right? Not abandoned, but, but had let go fallow. They were not using this coffee farm. Uh, he decided to come back and take over a farm that he didn't have to buy, right? That, that makes a completely different decision. And he already had a lot of connections. And because he's Nicaraguan, he has a lot of, a lot of rights to things and make things a lot easier. So like he can go to banks and do stuff uh, much quicker, much more easily. Um, and, and sometimes with more options, right, than, than you would. So yes, he was able to do that. Um, so it, is it physically possible to break into the market? Yes, if that's your goal. Uh, but for him, it, he had a whole bunch of factors that make it a completely different thing than anyone who's asking me or here on the channel. Um, it, you know, can I get into the tobacco market? No, not realistically, right? You're gonna be fighting against people who control the production, control the processing, control the export, uh, and then you're getting into a market that's already saturated as well. There's no additional demand for Nicaraguan coffee. There's no additional demand for Nicaraguan tobacco. Those things, yes, if you produce it and lower the cost, someone will buy it instead of something else. But the people looking for Nicaraguan products are able to get what they want already in, in great quantity. And there are really big companies that are very interested in shipping even more out than they're shipping today. So it wouldn't just be uh, providing a quantity that is unnecessary, it would be fighting against very well-established, extremely profitable, extremely experienced, extremely skilled companies that have a lot of weight behind them. Uh, it would be it'd be very, very difficult, right? <laughs> the example I use is, it would be like coming into the United States as someone with no connections, no experience, and not being an American, and showing up blindly and saying, I bet, we could make cars here, 
I could corner that market, right? Or, or something to that effect. And then finding out, oh, wait, there's like a lot of really major car companies in the US and oh, the car industry kind of grew up here. Like, like, oh, right, that's what it's going to be like. And actually that's a really great example of how, how easy it is to think that there's gonna be something we can do in Nicaragua and like, ah, no one's thought of that. Not only have they thought of it, they've been doing it for over a hundred years and it's a massively established industry and there's multiple cities with their own, like mansions everywhere from the people who've owned that for generations. And yes, some of them are expats, but they were expats generations ago when they were bringing in huge investment dollars and building that stuff. Today, a completely different landscape. The other thing that was said, and I'll try to pop it up, is uh, a lot of people would say that uh, starting businesses in Nicaragua would be easier uh, or potentially better than doing so in the United States because it allows you to get started cheaper and uh, basically get your experience, learn from your mistakes, and grow a business here um, at lower cost so that it's, uh, it's a lower threshold to get it going. Um, that way, because when you're starting a business, there's a lot of risk, right? Everyone knows this, I, I hope. And so having less overhead to starting a business, in theory, means you can start more businesses faster, more easily, and learn from your mistakes, and then work towards having a successful business through that. That's a great theory, um, and people, will, people who are uh, serial entrepreneurs, like me, will tell you, yes, it's important to be able to start lots of businesses, figure out what works, figure out what fails, move on from that, um, and um, which, which is kind of the venture capital theory uh, rather than the private equity theory uh, just kind of behind the scenes um, and uh, the throw a bunch of things at the wall and the wild one that works will make up for the ones that don't generally true um, so it's a really good theory the problem with this theory is a few things one is that it is not actually cheaper to start a business in Nicaragua than to start one in the United States for example it may be cheaper to start one in Nicaragua than to start one in Canada but Canada is literally the last country that I know of that is not at war that I would ever start a business in. It is one of the least friendly business countries anywhere. It's not just unfriendly to start one, it's unfriendly to, unfriendly to be in business in Canada. It is unfriendly to buy business equipment in Canada. It's unfriendly to do anything business related in Canada. Massively unfriendly business environment. The last thing you want. Employees in Canada, businesses in Canada, terrible, 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 terrible. So yes, Nicaragua's better than that, for sure, right? Everyone's better than that. But if you're comparing to the United States, the US makes it practically free to start businesses of all types. Yes, you want a lawyer, yes, you want, to, and those things add up. But if all you wanna do is start a business and learn, and you wanna do small businesses, you're gonna find that the US allows for many small businesses at extremely low cost. Yes, you have to do some planning, but it's very quick and easy to do so. So the the actual overhead to starting a business in the United States in time or money is some of the lowest in the world. This is where the U.S. really shines in a business environment. Its taxes overall is pretty good, but its ease of starting fully incorporated businesses with, with all the limited liabilities and all those things that are so important, really, really easy. Whereas like Cuba, one of the things is you are always at unlimited liability. It's very similar to uh, sole proprietorships in the US, which are reckless and crazy. Cuba, you tend to be stuck with that. That's something you have to watch out for. So Cuba is a difficult environment. In Nicaragua, you get those limited liabilities, just like in the US, but it's, it's quite a bit more time consuming to start them and quite a bit more expensive to do so. So those are really important points that that idea that I'm gonna to go to Nicaragua and save money in learning, because I can just, is the opposite. Nicaraguans would say, wait, I shouldn't start a bunch of businesses here. I should go to the US and start a bunch and do my learning there because it's cheaper and easier in the US than in Nicaragua. So the thought process is good, but the assumption that Nicaragua is gonna be the cheaper one is where it's wrong. The things that are cheaper in Nicaragua, for sure, it's cheaper to buy a building, it's cheaper to get land, it's cheaper to get labor, it's cheaper to get internet access, it's cheaper to get electricity. All those things are true, but you don't necessarily need those for a business. You probably do some amount of them. So once your business is established, once you're getting employees, once you're doing a bunch of things, yes, then Nicaragua will potentially start to offset some of that in the future. However, it only offsets things that are going to also not be able to make money because you're in Nicaragua. 
right? So if you're trying to, for example, I'll use a restaurant because when people look at the general business and say, oh, there's gotta be ways to make money, blah, blah, they're, they're looking at things that you probably can't do, like, well, I'll start a tobacco farm. Well, that's a saturated market, like super saturated market with dominant players that are really big and big money and they will make sure you go out of business, right? They're, they're good at that. So when we tend to look at that side and be like, ah, that's the kind of business that's gonna make money. And then when we say, oh, it's gonna be cheap to start up a business and it's got all these advantages, uh, advantages in Nicaragua, we tend to look at like a restaurant and say, well, but it'll be cheap to get labor, it'll be cheap to get the, the facilities. And so we, we tend to jump back and forth as to what we're looking at when we picture whether or not it'll be cost effective. So in the one case, if you were able to put in $100 million and build a giant tobacco facility, yes, you could potentially, if you could get all, all the legal hoops and get the import, export, all that stuff done, you'd have a real opportunity to uh, start up a big successful business as many people have already. Another example is what if you wanted to make rum, right? That is a saturated market. Florida Kanye totally owns that. If you'd got it in 150 years ago, had you invested massive amounts of money, had you brought in a bunch of expertise and gotten lucky, which is always required, yes, you could end up like Florida Kanye too. Can you do it again today? Can you replicate what they did 150 years ago? No, they did it 150 years ago with big investment. You can't replicate that today. Is there something that could be replicated like that? In theory, if you have expertise, lots of money, get lucky, and are the first in the market to something completely new that no one else is doing, absolutely, there's a chance to be another Fleur de Cagna, but neither you nor I know what that thing is if we did, we'd go out to the banks, we'd go out to venture capitalists and find the money to go give that a try, right? That's very, very tough. Um, pretty much you're limited to family money for big investing in Nicaragua, right? right? Very few venture capitalists, very few business people are willing to put money into foreign markets because it's way too risky. Once you start hopping between markets, it's all but impossible to legally protect your investment dollars because neither country is fully responsible. There's things you can do, it is hard. And people don't want to take that risk because it simply is a whole bunch of risk they don't have to take when investing. So they're not likely to do it uh, for something like that. Um, so, uh, so when you're thinking, uh, well, it's going to be really cheap to start up a business. What you're, what you're generally thinking is you're picturing not a big tobacco production facility because that's obviously not cheap to start up no matter how little. Uh, it costs to, uh, to hire somebody. You're talking about big investment that would easily start a business in the U.S. as well and possibly automate it. You're, you're looking at like a restaurant. And when you're looking at a restaurant, you have to remember, okay, so I'm making a business that services Nicaraguans. That's the only time that things are super cheap. They, they may be cheaper. If you were starting a tobacco processing facility in Nicaragua, you could say, well, it's, it's probably cheaper because the, the building, the warehouse, um, the, the storage, the, the processing floor, the, the shipping, all of that's gonna be cheaper here. So that means that I can do it cheaper than in the US. And that's misleading because all of the equipment that you're gonna need, that's gonna cost more here, not less. Maybe not a ton more, but some more. And that's where a lot of the money goes. And flying in expertise, because they probably don't have ex excess expertise here, you're still gonna have to hire some foreigners to do it, and they may demand even more money than normal because you're making them move to a country they've never considered, and they've got you over a barrel, so you're gonna have to pay more no matter what. Uh, the cost of logistics. Well, actually, fuel is a slightly more expensive here, not less. We don't drive as far, we don't, so, but those are things you have to consider that a lot of those things we feel, well, everything's just cheap in Nicaragua, doesn't actually apply to business in many cases. If your business is going to be exporting, then chances are there are things that are co more cost effective, like labor, but there's a bunch of things that are less cost effective, like equipment. Otherwise, everyone would be shipping all of their production here and they would just do it because it would be so much cheaper. There's a reason that they don't, right? Every company like General Motors, right? Everything they do, they consider Nicaragua every time, right? They're on the radar, they're considered, and every time they say, nope, doesn't make sense. You should be thinking, wow, all the big analysts say it doesn't make sense for all the things that they do and they own a whole bunch of things that you don't, right? They have the investment dollars, they don't need to, like they can easily decide to do it here if they wanted to, and a few Chinese makers have done so, only a few, only on limited scale, 
uh, and, and it, it, I think it makes sense for them. They've, they're doing a good job. And, and if you have those things, it may make sense for you. If you're a General Motors and you're watching this and you're like, huh, yeah, no, th that makes sense. But we, we have all these things. We overcome the problems. It could make sense for us. Absolutely it could. And if you want me to be a consultant for you, let me know, right? But if you're, if you're looking at your own business um, and you're saying, wow, it's gonna be really low cost, then you must be thinking something like a coffee shop, a restaurant, something that works in Nicaragua, does not require big equipment from the outside, and therefore services Nicaraguans. The moment you're sending something, something abroad, everything changes. Right. The moment you need English speakers, the cost goes way up. The moment you need to send it off to another country, the, the cost goes way up. Right. We don't have really good logistics here. We don't have a lot of deep water ports. We don't have trains. So that's a big negative to those types of productions. One of the reasons why factories don't come in here. That and we like to keep the country green and quiet. So factories would generally go against that. Not, not a huge thing that we want. Um, so uh, it's important that when you're looking at a restaurant, you say, oh, look, I could, I could get a restaurant open for a fraction of the cost of the U.S. This is true. A tiny fraction of what it takes to open a restaurant in the U.S. However, the potential to make money with that uh, here in Nicaragua is exactly proportionate to how little you're going to invest. So if a restaurant takes $10 million to open in the U.S., which is realistic, um, you could that was a lot of thunder out of nowhere. The sky is completely light blue. Um, if, you're, if, if you're gonna take $10 million to open a restaurant in the United States, you, you might be 100,000 to open one here. That's probably high for the US and low for Nicaragua, but those are real numbers. Like the, that's within the realm of possibility. That's 100 times the cost to open it in the US. But be aware that your potential for profits is roughly equal a hundred times the potential profits. If your business could earn you a million dollars a year in profits in the US, then you're probably looking at the potential for earning a thousand dollars a year of profits here in Nicaragua. It's pro in both cases, it's probably a little bit extreme. You probably wouldn't have to go all the way to, to 10 million in the US. You probably could, will have to do more than 100,000 here. So it's probably more like 200,000 versus 2 million or, or 5 million, right? So it's probably in the 10 to 20 times range and the profits, but the profits are going to track. And this is a universal rule. If those profits wildly didn't track like that, immediately American restaurant investors would shift to Nicaragua. Say, we're not opening restaurants in the US, we're opening restaurants in Nicaragua because that's where the profits are. And they would do so until it leveled out. It doesn't, right? It doesn't make sense to do that. Be, and so you don't see restaurants doing that, right? Burger King has one restaurant here. McDonald's has three, right? Four, something like that. They're not flooding in because there's not a whole bunch of more profits here. There are not a bunch of American restaurant uh, businesses or, or investors coming in, except those handful of us who have been here for a long time, who, who have been in restaurants for a long time and simply want a restaurant here. And we're doing it as a hobby. See my video yesterday about hobbies versus business. And if, if your goal is not to make money, but you just like having a restaurant, if you want to have a restaurant and you don't care about profits, then yes, Nicaragua is going to be much cheaper in general. Not always, but in general. If your goal is to have food you can eat, if the goal is to be a chef and make food you want to make, if the goal is to just have fun or to have something to keep you busy because you already live here and you just don't want to be idle, then yes, opening a restaurant, opening a business of almost any kind here, very low threshold from that kind of perspective. As long as you're not looking for profits, Yes, you can, you can get something open and, and have that business and be like, yep, I own a restaurant. Cool, right? And lots of people, lots of people have enough money to do that and find it interesting. That's not business, it's hobby, okay? So if that's what you want to do, it makes sense. But I know people who've been career restaurateurs who still don't open restaurants here. And I know people who have been career restaurateurs and have opened restaurants here and lost them very quickly, right? So even with lifetimes, of extreme expertise, of, of loads of experience, people are either knowledgeable enough to not even bother because they were hoping to make money, or they were hoping to make money and gave it a try and realized that with loads of North American expertise, it doesn't really get you very far. Uh, so this is the thing you're tending to be picturing. So you say, okay, well, I'm gonna put in this effort. I'm gonna open a business. Yes, you can. But the fact that it was lower cost means you would have had to open 10 or 20 of them here in order to make the same profits you did or would in the US. And so it, it means it's not cheaper, right? It's the same cost. You can, you can do micro businesses here 
that you can't do in the U.S., right? It's, it's way too hard to open a micro restaurant in the U.S. It's just not realistic. You have to get to a certain threshold or the, the overhead of all the legalities of it are too much and you'll get crushed. Okay, so you can do micro businesses here, but in order for micro businesses to make you money, they have to add up to the size of a business that would make you that amount of money somewhere else uh, or here as well. So thinking of it as, a, oh, but I can just have a small business. Yes, and you can make no profits, right? That little tiny business only has a tiny potential. That's why people aren't doing it. If that had the potential to make lots of money, there are, every Nicaraguan has access to the money to do that. I mean, it would be this simple. If your theory that it was easy to make enough money, I assume that's your theory, easy enough to make enough money to make it worth your time to do, then a Nicaraguan could do it more easily than you could. It would be widely accessible. And trust me, if that was a working theory, a Nicaraguan would already have that idea, would have come to me and said, look, I can make all this money. All I need is this little bit of investment. And I'd say, wow, let's do that all day, every day. I would run through my investment pool, opening things as fast as possible. I would then show that that's working and go put together many more investors or simply take my massive profits from my first round of that and open new ones with those. I'd be able to go to Nicaraguan banks. I'd be able to go to American banks and say, look, I can put up collateral. Look, I can like this works and they would give me money, right? That's not happening because it's, it's not the case, right? So that, that theory that there's low overhead to get started, yet there's enough money to make it worth it, doesn't make sense, right? The world doesn't work that way in business. If those opportunities existed, they would level out very quickly because people, there are people with money who are already in every market, they would know those places and they would instantly jump all over them and the market would self-correct. So it has to be something that you are bringing expertise and, and breaking into a market that doesn't already exist uh, and, and, and it'll be limited, right? It'll never be, and everyone can do it. It'll be, you have a special sauce, you put it together and it makes sense. Now, the other piece you have to realize is that when you're doing any of these things, this is really important in general for business people when we're talking about, oh, I wanna start a bunch of businesses, I wanna try a bunch of things, I wanna to learn to be a business person. Um, so first of all, if you wanna to learn to be a business person, don't come to Nicaragua. This is the absolute, not really, this is a really bad environment for you to be doing that just in general. If you want to be an, a serial entrepreneur and you want to come to Nicaragua, you need to figure out how to, to, to take those two wildly disparate concepts and marry them in your mind. You're going to need to be a serial entrepreneur somewhere else and live here. You're not going to be a business person here. It doesn't make sense. And, and, and just like I said in the video yesterday, foreigners are addicted to the idea for some reason when coming to Nicaragua, not when going to other countries, just when coming to Nicaragua, that they're going to somehow get into all this business in the least business likely environment in, in the Western hemisphere, like, well, within the, the mainland, right? Haiti would definitely be worse. And, and Cuba would be worse, right? Very, very hard places. But short of those, this is really hard to have successful businesses that make any amount of money. So you should never be coming here and have the thought, you know what I wanna do? I'm interested in business. Willing to do business because you need to for some reason? Okay, that's, you should, should not rule things completely out. Um, I did for reasons that are not making money. Okay, right? I was willing to, to have a business because opportunity fell in my lap and the opportunity was not to make money. The opportunity was to have a business that provided some needs for me and my family. So that made sense and I was willing, I was open to that. That I think is good. Um, even that, I would step back and say, Scott, you were crazy. Even the things, it's, there's better ways to do those things than to have your own business, but, but it's not completely crazy. At least be open to it, but, but be a little bit more critical. Okay. Um, the, so the other thing is your time. When you're opening a business in the United States, chances are you're hoping that that business will pay your bills, that that business will make you able to be profitable, right? That it'll, it'll be worth your time to do. Uh, and so to do that, um, you can put a number on that, right? If you're living in the US, what is that number? Is it $50,000 a year, $100,000 a year, a quarter million dollars a year that you need to make to make opening a, a business worth it? And, and some of those numbers may sound really big to a lot of you, Right, $50,000, you say, okay, well, I could scrape by in the US for that. Oh, 100,000, I, I could live okay. Quarter million, wow, that's super comfortable. Like, if, why, why wouldn't I run a business if it could make me that much? The reason is, as business people, you know that there is super high risk to business. And so if you have a job that pays you $100,000 or you own your own business and it pays you $100,000, you take the job every day, right? The job has to pay you. They don't just pay you when things go well. The job has to give you benefits. They don't 
get excused from it as an owner, you don't get benefits in your company. Even if your company has benefits, if you're going to get those benefits, you have to buy them. They come directly out of your potential profits. So while there's ways to do it, it's, it's not good, right? Business owners know that businesses have to make way more money than normal employment would or they're not worth it unless they're giving you some other benefit, right? Well, I really, I just want to own a restaurant. I only want to make the food that I want to make and I'm willing to make half as much money to do so. Okay, that's not a business, that is a hobby and that's perfectly fine. I totally get hobbies. I've always worked in hobbies. I love hobby businesses, but they are not businesses. They are not there to make money. They're there to give you a way to do the thing you want to do if you wanted to make money, you ha so you have to compare. Yesterday we talked about how profits have to beat the 10% uh, rough uh, index fund index for what real profitability is before you even consider profits. In the same way, as an individual, you have to consider your business has to pay you more than you can make working a job or you're paying to have that business. You are personally losing money in order to have that business, and that would make it a hobby or a failed business, depending on how you look at it. I definitely do this. When I worked on Wall Street, I brought in much more money than any business I've ever owned has made, uh, at least on a on a year-to-year -year basis. On a momentary basis, my businesses may make more, but on the long haul, it's always more profitable for me to go work for a big bank or for a big government or something like that. So that's something you also have to say. If you're living in Nicaragua, then for your business to make sense, for it to truly be profitable, it needs to earn enough money to be more than you could make with the equivalent work. So whether you work uh, 20 hours a week to make the business work or 40 or 60, if you were to take that same amount of time, of your time, and put that into working remotely for a business that you create in say the US or Canada or Western Europe or working for someone else in those places, that's how much that business in Nicaragua needs to generate to be a true business, to be an actual attempt at making money rather than a hobby where you're just doing something and you're gonna support it by basically paying for it. And it's partially paying through your labor, partially paying through lower income, but that's how business people look at those, those kinds of earnings. It's a really important aspect to remember. If you have another way that makes more money, that's how you invest, right? You don't invest where it makes less money. That's not a business process. You invest where you think it's gonna make more money. Of course, you can be wrong. Mistakes are a part of everything, but that's where people get this wrong. They think, well, I can make a little bit of money in Nicaragua. Very little, and it's gonna take so much of your work. And little things you don't realize are going to require your work, running and dealing with banks, just talking to lawyers more often, things that are not a huge deal. But if you were to put that time into just working abroad, the chances that you wouldn't make way more money just working abroad is very low. So when you're looking at those, oh, but I could have a restaurant here. Yes, but it could take all of your time and it may not pay you enough money to live. And there's a lot of, factors that come into this as well. If you are American, for example, and you run a restaurant in the United States, you can offset some of the taxes by paying yourself a salary. But if you live in Nicaragua, you can't do that. You have to pay yourself out of profits. If there are any, you can't use salary as part of the system because you're not eligible to work here, not even for yourself. You can do work, but you can't be paid as an employee. That's not an option to you. So as an expat. Uh, so just there's more and more limitations because you're not eligible to work in this market because you can't run out and find a job because you, whatever. So in order for Nicaragua businesses to pay the same as you would need in the United States, right? You have to, uh, if, if an individual restaurant only pays 1,000 a year, or let's say it's a month, right? Let's make this easy. You have a giant restaurant, it's able to make you $1,000 of profit a month. Basically you're paid for your time and you need 10,000 a month to live on. That would be really high, right? But let's just say, then you need 10 of those businesses making $1,000 a month. If you're in the United States, you might do that with a single restaurant that pays you $10,000 a month. It would cost 10 times as much to open that restaurant, but the amount that you would bring home is the same. Of course, you can live cheaper here, whatever. I'm not running all the math. I'm just saying that you don't get all the benefits of an American restaurant from a Nicaraguan restaurant. You have to add up your investment. And in case, again, in case this math isn't obvious, if the amount that you invested resulted in a different percentage of returns on average from one to another, right? 
If, if the American restaurant on average returned, say, 10% of profits, and the Nicaraguan returned on average 20%, then American investors would flood into Nicaragua and buy restaurants until that number evened out, until there were so many restaurants that it worked its way back down to 10%, and then everyone would just go back to randomly wherever they, they get an opportunity to open a restaurant. You don't get wildly different returns on normal investment, except for very limited periods of time, very rapidly big investors will equalize. That is how the world market works. You can end up with isolated pockets for brief periods of time where some people end up with advantages and that's always what you're looking for in a business perspective, where you're gonna get an advantage, but those are things where you've gotta find it. If anyone knows about it, they're going to jump on it. They're never gonna have them open for you. So all of that is to say these, these there's always this emotional impression. I'm not sure where it comes from, but it's really consistent that people think they're gonna come to Nicaragua or some other tiny market. They're going to come with often very little expertise, very little uh, experience, no particular special plan, often repeating the patterns that everyone else has said, the exact same things over and over again, and think they're gonna have wild success where they would never have had that success back home where they have it much easier. Instead of saying, wow, this is so much harder for me as an expat, I should be extra wary. They say, oh, as an expat, I have so many disadvantages, it'll be easy. I don't need to worry about all the diligence that I would have to do back home. Now, it is true, right? The, the theory that, well, but I can, I can put in less money and, and not be so scary. That is why a lot of us do hobby businesses here, right? If I was gonna open a restaurant in the United States, there's so much overhead, there's so much risk to that. It's not worth it unless I really have a solid idea and lots of money behind me and, and really passionate about working in that restaurant myself every day. But here, I can very easily say, well, I want to be able to eat at this restaurant. I want to work at it from time to time. I'm not too concerned about if it makes money or not because the total amount I'm going to lose is not that much because it's a tiny business in comparison. I'm willing to do it because it's a hobby and it's fun. The threshold's different for hobby. Absolutely. If it was a business and I needed it to be profitable, then it, the threshold is the other way. It's crazy to invest here. You should be investing like in the US or Canada. But if you're looking at it from a hobby perspective and you don't care about making money, then yes, getting into Nicaragua is very different. But it is not going to give you experience in the way that you hope. So you can't go into that hobby saying, ah, this hobby is going to make me ready to be a serial entrepreneur somewhere else. It may help, it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna provide you the kind of learning that you need because running a hobby and running a business are fundamentally different. There's a lot of overlapping mechanisms. You still have to have contracts, you still have to pay employees, you have to learn how much overhead there is on things. So yes, there's some learning. But the, the core learning, the things that teach you how to run a business successfully may not overlap at all. Uh, and in some cases may teach you bad things. You think, ah, oh, this is just how it works and it may not generally be how it works when you're trying to run a real business. So be very cautious of that. I wasn't expecting to do two days of business talks back to back, but people had questions and it seemed to be a thing coming up. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link above buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. If you're looking for help in moving to Nicaragua, you can shoot us an email and our services are available for phone consultations or helping you find a house or working with you to buy furniture or giving you tours of the country to help you figure out where you want to be. Shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Let them know that this is a great resource for finding out more what it's actually like here. And hopefully I'm going to get out and go for a walk tomorrow. I've been, I've been kind of stuck here just because catching up on the show, but we're doing well. So I will see all of you tomorrow.